posterior pelvic tilt dysfunction care pack. There are four parts. First part is get adjusted. Not only will the adjustment clear the nervous system and speed the recovery, it will also add motion to the joint, which will allow the other three components of the care path to work at their optimum. Second part is stretching out tight muscles. Third part is strengthening weak muscles. And lastly, we want to integrate the whole thing together so that we can use it on a functional basis in our day-by-day -day lives. Stretching. There's a couple guidelines with stretching. We want to make sure that we hold it for 10 seconds. We want to repeat that three times. We want to do them twice daily. We want to make sure that the stretch is uncomfortable but not painful. If anything hurts while doing the exercises, please stop immediately. Outside hamstring stretch. We're going to be laying on our back. Knee comes up. We're going to grab the outside of our thigh muscle, feeling the cord of our hamstring on the outside. You're going to extend the leg and then pull the leg toward the opposite shoulder. So you think of your foot going over your opposite shoulder. For our piriformis stretch, we're going to be on the ground. We're going to take our knee and bring it over toward our opposite shoulder. while keeping the hip on the floor. For our lying adductor stretch, we'll be on the ground. Bringing our leg up into an H position and pressing our hip to the floor Feeling the stretch in the groin. For our global core stretch, we're going to be on the floor on our belly. While keeping our hips on the ground, we're going to push up like we're doing a push up. Stretching out the front of our abdomen. There's also a couple of guidelines with the strength training exercises. First one, the body part needs to be moving at a cadence of 2 to 4. That's 2 seconds exertion, a 2 second hold at the top, and a 4 second release. The second guideline is that we're doing it once a day for 10 to 20 repetitions for each exercise. For our transverse abdominis exercise, we're going to be in the quadruped position. And we'll be lifting the opposite arm and leg at the same time. The important part of this is that our belly stays engaged throughout the entire movement, belly to spine. There shouldn't be too much rotation of the spine where you get this, where you get this. <clears throat> the spine should stay nice and flat. For our multifidi strengthening exercise, we're going to be in child's pose or similar to child's pose. Down on our knees, we're going to take the one of our arms and place the elbow in between our knees while the other hand's in a what would typically be a sit-up position while resting our ribs on our opposite thigh. We're going to just rotate out and up as high as we can, and then come back down. Remembering to breathe throughout the exercise. For the glute maximus exercise, we're going to be laying on our belly. 
For the first part of the exercise, we want to suck our navel to our spine, engaging our abs, stabilizing our lower back. With the toe pointed, we want to slightly flex the knee, bring the knee close to the other knee, and then extend. When we overextend, this is where we start feeling it in our lower back. For our glute medius exercise, what we want to be doing is laying up against the wall. With There are two progressions with this exercise. First of all, both cheeks on the wall, both feet on the wall. Hand can come right under the head. And what we want to do is simply open as wide as we can and then slowly come back down. When you can reach 20 reps without any effort, then we're going to move to the straight leg modification. Leg is slightly turned out and we're going to drag the heel up the wall and back down. For our single leg balance exercise with reach, there's two parts. The first one, we want to be able to balance on one foot for a minute. First, we want to cue the foot that we're going to be standing on so it has a nice high arch, and we want to maintain that arch throughout the full movement. We're going to curl our toes under, and then just place our foot down, pressing through the ball of our foot. Now, the first part of it is just lifting the opposite foot, and trying to maintain the position where you're not leaning too far one way. We want to try to stay in alignment with our hips and shoulders in alignment, leaning as little as possible. Pushing through the bottom of our foot, the ball of our foot. Once we have this position down and we can hold it for a full minute, then we can move into a clock face exercise where we're cueing our foot to maintain that arch, pushing through the ball, and then taking our toe and touching to 12 o'clock, and 11 o'clock, and 10 o'clock, and 9 o'clock, and so on and so forth throughout the whole half of the clock. So from 12 o'clock to 6 o'clock, and then the same thing on the other side from 12 o'clock to 6 o'clock. We want to add challenge to it. We want to do five reps in a row around the clock and then five reps in a row along the clock this way as well. For the single leg deadlift with touchdown, we are going to start off the same way as we did with the single leg balance. Cueing the arch in our foot, pushing through the ball of our foot, and then simply with the opposite hand, we're going to touch the foot that is down. 